What we have is a panel that is going to celebrate uh, seven decades of ties and experiences to farm and wilderness. Share um, an experience, a memorable uh, experience of your time at F&W at the camps. Um, the story I was going to tell originally was about a trip, but the risk management committee stepped in and stopped me. <laughs> it involved the fact that the trip I was on was on top of Pico in the lightning storm that actually set the office on fire in 1978. So we won't tell that story. We wait, all wait, got wait. home safely. <laughs> we will tell the story about meeting for worship. Now, you, should, uh, you may not know, but I actually have two of my former teachers from Germantown friends here. Um, so I'm a little, I'm probably gonna get graded by this at the end of the day. So um, by way of my background, um, as my mother, Lake Joan Countryman, went to Farmer Wilderness and also went to Germantown Friends and also taught at, at Germantown Friends. And both of them sent their kids to Germantown Friends and Farmer Wilderness. So I have a, a, a Quaker upbringing, despite the fact that I was not born a Quaker. And I hope they'll at least attest to this after the fact that I was actually a pretty good student at the weekly meeting for worship. I was not one of the kids who was usually a handful. In a Quaker school, you get a lot of kids who are a handful and don't show up. Fast forward getting up to Vermont, and one of the interesting things was is that Germantown Friends in the 70s and 80s was a feeder school for farm and wilderness, especially Timberlake and Indian Brook. And one of the things that I think that the Quaker school kids did to help was is we actually explained what meeting for worship was to our peers in our cabins. And it wasn't always down to the counselor trying to explain it because oftentimes the counselors weren't Quaker and didn't really understand what meeting for worship was. So once they figured out that they had some Quaker school kids and they sort of throw the ball over and say, hey, why don't you try to explain this? And we would take it through the, there's that of God in every man and finding the light and being quiet and it didn't play well, especially with the younger kids. They didn't understand it. Why are we being forced to do this? I want to go see the Yankee scores or the Red Sox scores or something. And the Phillies were awful back then, so we didn't care about the Phillies scores. So every once in a while, you'd have a great meeting for worship. And I want to tell you about one of those. And it actually happened when I was a staff member. Um, I, was, I, had, I actually, in 1983, had the best, probably the best cabin in Timberlake, and I had some very famous Timberlake one gentleman named Ev Oliver, who some people may remember, who was, a, he remembers him well, who was a, a, a comic extraordinaire, but also one of the most gentle souls in the world. And he could not, even go, having gone to the camp for at that point five or six years, figure out what meeting for worship was about. And he kept pounding on me, you know, what's this about, I don't wanna go. And he just wanted to stay in bed, basically. Some of you may know Dan Rose and Dan Rose and Ann Beatty. Well, this is the summer that they decided to get married. And I was walking up to a meeting that day and I saw Dan with this enormous smile on his face. And I had known Dan since 1978. And I looked at him and I said, what's going on with you? He said, oh, I'm just really, really, really happy. And I said, you just got engaged, didn't you? And he's like, how did I move? Exploded. Did you figure that out? And I said, you just have a different look on your face. And we got to meeting and he sat, we all sat down and I kept, I could tell he was bursting to say something and he actually stood up and said basically the following, which was, he misquoted a, an Apache phrase, hukahe, which we were told back then was, today is a good day to die is a war cry. I've subsequently looked it up and found that we were all wrong. But at the time in context, coming back to Jones, in August, context is important here. That we all thought that this is what the phrase meant. And Dan basically came out and said that that day when he had gotten engaged was the most perfect day in the world for him. And the way he told it to all of us, even the little fidgety kids stopped and stared at Dan for five minutes while he just let us all know with the joy in his heart. And then he sat down and the meeting took a totally different tone for the next 15 minutes. Nobody fidgeted. Everybody sat there and thought about what Dan Rose had just told them about his life. And then meeting ended. And I remember Ev coming up to me at dinner that night and saying, I get meeting for worship. And for people who go to meeting for worship all the time, it's those moments that you hope other people will actually get to share with you.
right, good evening. So uh, my name is Morgan Jones, and um, first I just want to say how it's an honor to be here. So thank you for having me. And uh, I was in TL during, uh, from 96 to, uh, actually 94 to 96. TF was 97, 98. TL was 99, 01, and 03, and I'm really happy that there are people in this room who've been campers or work with me during these times, so I'm really happy to see that and, and, and share memories with some of the folks in there here in this room. Um, and probably one of the deepest memories that I have um, was from working in TL. Um, I was a counselor in 99, and um, as a camper, I already knew about all of the ratings that Peter actually mentioned earlier, the Pioneer, the uh, Pathfinder, the Homesteader, and these are really great ratings that were related to what Vermont is all about, that rustic environment, building cabins, or going on trips and hiking and so forth. But I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, these aren't things that we just do, don't, we don't just do these things on Flatbush Avenue near Bergen Street. Um, we don't do these things in my neighborhood necessarily. So, um, I mean, I don't know. If it does happen, it might be illegal under the mayor's office. And I won't get into that. But, um, but honestly, uh, they, what I, I wanted to try something a little bit different. Um, so when I was a camper there, um, I thought during that time, hip hop was definitely taking a major, like just, just this was in the forefront of music. Um, the style, the dress, and so on. Um, but you obviously can't listen to music while you're a camper there. There's no canned music. Um, at the time, it was all about having discmans. Now it's all iPads and iPods and all this i stuff. Um, but I wanted to figure out a way where we can kind of create our own music and do something that would be a little bit different, yet hip hop related. So in 99, I created a new reading called The Rhymer. And so the whole point of the rhymer was for people to have the opportunity to learn how to rhyme, learn how to rap. And they can practice this on their own. And since we didn't have canned music, we don't have any you know, electronic beats or MP3s or anything like that to back us up, we would learn how to beatbox, which beatbox is when you're using your mouth to make beats kind of like like that. So. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Tour is coming up next. But, uh, but basically, um, so I would, I would teach our kids this, you know, how to, how to make beatbox, how to make your own music with your body and come up with lyrics on your own. And so we had our little talent things that we did over at TL um, every week. And we would always do a performance each week where we just made up our own songs and our own music. And um, sometimes we would apply that to some of the TL fair skits. And, and actually, I know for many years, people don't think of TL as doing really well in terms of doing fair skits. But after that time, we kicked butt and took names. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. So, so sorry, IB. Um, but it was, a, it was a really good thing because um, after this rating, usually, if it was a woodsman or woodswoman, you get a little can opener. Or with a pioneer, you got an ax. But I wanted to bring it back to the basics of writing, and so we gave them a notepad and a, and, a, and a pen, and a pen, and just said, practice writing. Just write, be creative, do something that's different and that sort of stands out. And I think that that's something that Farmer Wilderness has instilled in me, and it's allowed me to do this through that Rhymer program that was set up. And so, um, to me, that's kind of one of the greatest memories I've had, and I think I still talk with some campers about that today on Facebook, so thanks. Fantastic.